Welcome to our first stop here in the Isle of Skye, the small village of Elgol. It is indeed a small town, but it has a beautiful beach. Well, I guess the beach is okay. What's cool about this place and why it attracts so many photographers is the backdrop, because you can see the Black Coolings, I think is the name, uh, mountains of uh, sky. There's no one right here, right now, which surprises me a bit. I'm sure there will be more people, more photographers uh, later for sunset because, I don't know, it's a nice day, so we might even have a colorful uh, sunset. But this is the advantage of, uh, you know, shooting in black and white. I don't need to be here at a specific time because uh, the colors don't really matter to me. All I care about is the light. And we have beautiful light, so I hope to make uh, beautiful images. So obviously the main attraction here is that beautiful cliff with that beautiful shape. It frames the mountain in the background. That's what I've been trying to capture from uh, farther away with longer focal lens. What I'm going to be trying to do from closer with a wider uh, focal length. Something I could not really do last time I was here because this is not my first time here and it might not be the last. I came here a few days ago and the conditions were very very different. It was a totally different day. It was rainy and misty and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Give me that atmosphere, give me that drama, give me that dreamy uh, moody day uh, any day before these conditions or before a sunny day of course but it is nice to finally have that view that I didn't have a few days ago I still got to make some images here that I'm gonna show you right now So far, they've all been uh, regular hand handheld shots, but I'm gonna try to take a couple long exposures here because we have some clouds there um, passing behind the uh, 
the, the mountain and that could look very cool. So I'm gonna try that. Oh. Make sure we have a five second timer. Uh, let's do it. Set a timer for one minute. I can go to the other side of this cliff, of these rocks. Something I didn't get to do the other day. It was raining, all the rocks were slippery. And today is so much nicer, so much easier to just walk around here. What a nice day. I think this is the nicest day I've had in Scotland so far. Just beautiful. Not amazing for photography, but it is so nice to be outside. Okay, I'm uh, struggling to find something, but I just noticed those uh, little puddles on the rocks. And uh, I like them because the, the, the sun is uh, right in front of us. So that creates, that makes them look very bright, creates contrast. And all of them are pointing in that way. And we have that rock there. So I was thinking maybe trying to do something with that. Um, I don't know. I was thinking something, you know, something like that. Maybe getting closer. You see something like this with those uh, three paddles on the bottom right, the rock on the uh, top left. All right, so that is looking pretty good actually from there. Let's see, you see with the polarizer, we can make them real bright right there. Get to the left. All right, this looks good. I'm gonna be focusing here, although Hopefully everything will be in focus, but let me check the polarizer again. That should give us um, almost four minutes. Yeah, let's do four minutes because those clouds are not moving that fast and I really want them gone. 15, stop and the filter again. Just gonna slam it right there. And four minutes. It's kind of a long wait, but it should be worth it. I just hope the light doesn't change or doesn't change much within the next four minutes and I can capture this the way I want because it is very, very nice. I really like it. Oh my, what a mess. Look, I have two tripods there. I have the monitor on the ground. I have my bag there on the ground. I'm very messy. And then, you know, disasters happen. All right. This could be interesting. I really like the uh, curve that the beach makes here. Uh, pointing towards the, the mountain, but I would love that cliff on the right hide the, the brighter mountain in the background. So it's just, you know, let me show you what I mean, because maybe I don't even know what I'm talking about, but you know, I really like the curve and that is pointing to that mountain. What I don't love is that other one right there. It's kind of a little bit distracting. Um, so maybe if I get closer and a little bit to the right that cliff will hide that mountain and i'll be left with that but i'm afraid that if i get closer 
I'm gonna get lower as well to lower ground and that means that that separation that we have right there that water that we have there above the the beach if I get lower that might disappear as well and then I will lose the shape of the beach but we will never know for sure until we try well that took a little while but I think I I'm finally into something from here let me show you what we got from here so now as I was saying that cliff is hiding the mountain um, there is not enough separation for that rock over there but that is gonna have to do I'm really liking what I'm seeing I hope you can see it as well and I hope you like it too again I'm gonna do the circular polarizer to see if that can help in any way well obviously I want to make the the water brighter because uh, I want it to contrast with the right side you know the the shore the beach is going to be the dark part and the the water I want it I want it to be uh, brighter that is making the uh, those mountains brighter as well which is fine because again they contrast very well with the cliff here that is going to be dark so I think something like that should be very nice I'm gonna do the clouds are moving fairly fast I'm gonna do I'm gonna start with a couple minutes and then we'll check make sure that everything is good I don't want to go crazy with the first long exposure so the good thing about uh, using almost always the same filter the uh, 15 stop is that I know the uh, the shutter speed that I need to get in order to get the uh, long exposure that I want uh, as you can see 1 over 250 that will convert to 2 minutes that's why I have it there if I wanted to uh, get a 1 minute long exposure I would need a 1 500th of a second so I would need to open the aperture uh, like that to get 1 500 if I wanted say 4 minutes well I have to close the aperture all the way to 1 25th and that's how how I do it and I, it makes it very easy to just always use the 15 stop and the filter but yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna take it before it goes away five six one hundred eight there you go so I need the cable all right two minutes Okay, let's pack up and move on. So much stuff. <laughs> and the stuff that you don't see. It is my job after all and I love it. So I don't mind at all. that building there that shed I took a photo of it the other day in very different conditions as I said in the fog and I really like that photo beautiful mountains with the fence there I need to take that shot so this is not going to be to the taste of everyone but I really like it I'm gonna do a panorama here those mountains behind the fence they look beautiful I'm gonna get out really quick
love it, love it, love it. See those trees back there? Probably not. Well, hopefully you can see them there. They are beautiful. And the other day I took a photo of one of them, the one on the uh, right. And I really like it. And I also got it with a ship in front. The light is pretty incredible right now. And hopefully this is not wet because I don't have the right shoes. What did I tell you? Beautiful tree. I hope you are enjoying the video. Just a quick interruption because I really have to thank my Patreon supporters. You know, making a living with photography nowadays is not easy and your contributions, all of them, the big and the small ones, make a difference because I don't have to be chasing trends that uh, an algorithm likes or anything like that. I can make what I love, videos and images like the ones that you are seeing here. So thank you so much to all of you for making this happen. Let's go back to the video from Sky. What a beautiful morning we have uh, here in the Isle of Skye. Uh, there is a waterfall there. I, it's a pretty popular spot. The waterfall is okay. You know, I did make some images. I uh, did take some long exposures and they look great. But I saw something so much better up here. And it's that beautiful, beautiful tree. Not only it's a beautiful tree, but the shape seems to, you know, hug the mountain in the background. There's a fence here, so that is preventing me from getting closer to the tree. I've been working with the 50 millimeter lens. Uh, I shot it at 1.4, just trying to to uh, make the uh, the you know the tree the main character of this, while it's still showing, while it's still suggesting the landscape in which uh, it is. Uh, I think it's looking beautiful. About this fence, I think there is a workaround because there is a gate a little bit farther down. So I think I'm gonna go there and come this other way and, and try with wider uh, lenses, with wider angle lenses, because this is a beautiful, a beautiful tree and I want, to, I want to work it a little bit more. Okay, it's going to be... Oh, interesting. Oh my God, look at that. Oh. Ooh. Well, we made it to the other side of the fence. I can get as close to the tree as I want. I'm gonna try first with the uh, 35 1.4 lens and then I will switch to the uh, 20 1.4 as well and see if we can get something even better than what we got from the other side of the fence. I really hope so. All right, beautiful, beautiful. All right, I think we are done here. What a beautiful tree in a beautiful setting. I like them all, all the compositions. I like the, uh, the, the photos I took with the 20, with the 35 and with the 50. But I think that the ones I like the most are the ones I took with the 35 because I think it's the, uh, 
the right balance between the the tree the weight of the tree and the weight of the the background in the frame the 50 uh, made the mountains a little bit too big and the 20 made them a little bit too small i think the 35 is the right spot but i mean i might change my mind once i uh, you know sit down in front of the computer and look at them uh, with more time but uh but yeah what a what a find here on the side of the road so close to such a popular spot and uh, very 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 happy about it I'm taking another long exposure, another roadside uh, photograph. The car is right there, but I saw those mountains over there and the shadows that the clouds were creating. I wanted to include something in the foreground to make it a little bit more interesting. So I got lower here and I added that rock over there. Well, I guess it's more than one rock now. The tide is uh, receding. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a, it's a pretty interesting and I like what I'm seeing so far. I guess this was the uh, bridge to access the uh, castle. There's not much left, but uh, it must have been a pretty cool structure with a pretty cool view here. I'm in South Sky in the uh, Sleep Peninsula in Dokaveg, I believe that's the name. I've been here for, I want to say three days, but it, it's hard to tell because time is a blurry concept these days living on the road. But yeah, it's been very sunny and very hot and I didn't have anywhere to go really with that kind of weather. It's not the weather that I, that I like for my photography. So I've been just uh, uh, hanging out and uh, working and uh, going for walks because uh, the bad side, the bad thing about, you know, the, the bad weather. Yes, I do get the photos that I want, but I don't get to, uh, to move as much as I want to, to exercise as much as I want to. And I have been able to these last uh, few days. Anyway even though the weather was not the best I was still able to take some photos of the incredible view that you get from this uh, side of the uh, black and the red collins. Collins. My typical square composition doesn't really fit uh, most of the images that I uh, saw here so I used uh, my second uh, favorite uh, aspect ratio and that is the 6 by 17 panorama and I uh, made a, a couple of images that I really really like.
I was uh, really hoping to get to the uh, top of uh, what's left of the castle to get a good view of the mountains but I guess that is not happening because that bridge doesn't look good and I don't know the conditions uh, yeah too much risk for the reward and actually I might be able to get uh, on top of this hill next to the actual castle and I might get the, uh, the same view so yeah 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 pretty cool oh. there is poop from the ship here this is going to be another 6x17 panorama beautiful beautiful view the sun is setting too and you might be able to hear that music there is someone playing a, a bagpipe at the at the beach it's a fellow camper and I love it I love it uh, not many people know that you know where I'm from from northwest Spain from Galicia the bagpipe is a thing there like the the, the anthem of uh, Galicia is uh, is bagpipes and the traditional music has a lot of bagpipes as well there are a lot of things in common culturally between northwest Spain and the United Kingdom uh, in general uh, an island of course and music is one of them all right let's take this photo because it's getting dark I'm crossing fingers uh, hoping that it looks good because this is magical and it's amazing I mean thankfully I, I, you might not believe me because uh, what I'm showing you right now but it was a very sunny very clear day disgusting for photography and now we have this magical night uh oh didn't work oh sure. I used the wrong ND filter Come on, work, 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 yes! Alright, that was beautiful. I really liked the image that I made. I was not expecting to make a good photograph today, but you never know, you always uh, have to try. Anyway, I'm gonna head back before it gets too dark and maybe I'll I'll be there in time to, uh, to listen to the concert. Ah, finally, after three very sunny, very boring days, the misery is over, we are back to awesome amazing weather i know i know i'm being very dramatic it wasn't that bad but i rather have this kind of weather because it makes everything look so much better and one of those things is the old men store i've already been here before but it's a pretty cool beautiful and special place that deserves to be visited to be seen to be photographed more than once and that's why i'm here it looks like i'm gonna get very similar conditions though it's pretty windy it's not raining now so that's good yeah never mind it is raining horizontally too <laughs> All right, so I know from my last time here that this is the only part of the hike that is kind of protected from the wind and the rain, at least when it's coming from that side. So I'm gonna switch lenses now because I am mounting the ground lens. I definitely need the wide angle lens for here. I don't think I'm gonna have much use for this lens. I don't think I'm gonna find many shots in the distance. I want it rain, didn't I? This is much worse than the first time I was here and that one was bad.
Well, it's not raining anymore, which is very nice. It's still very windy, but what a beautiful place and what beautiful conditions to be here right now. And I'm very happy because I'm not the only one feeling this way. I've had quite a few people come uh, to me when it's rainy, when it's foggy, and say, I'm sorry, these are not the best conditions for your photographer. Like, no, I like it like this. I was told that so often that I just started saying, yeah, it's too bad that it's uh, rainy and foggy but today uh, someone just uh, came to me and said you know these are beautiful conditions better than a uh, sunny bright day I'm like oh my god i totally agree you can still see a little bit of the big rock behind me really really beautiful these weights mysterious it's just hinting what's there the giant that is uh, shy or i don't know it's just so much better i really really like it even though I want to see this place, the whole view, at some point, so I'm, I'm going to have to come in the better weather conditions in the future. Well, I took a bunch of pictures. I'm coming up again just to, to see if I can find something else, but I think I'm gonna start heading down to the car again. I'm very wet. All my clothes are wet. My shoes are soaked. They're not gonna dry for three days. It's very hard to dry them in the car. My clothes, I'm hoping that if it doesn't rain again, this uh, wind will dry them for the most part. Before I get to the car, we'll see. I am not wet, not soaked, but beyond. Oh my God, it feels like I fell in a lake. Yeah, I'm not too worried about my clothes. They will dry soon enough. I am more worried about my, uh, my shoes though. Those are gonna take a long time. All right, I need to put new clothes on or something. All right, I'm gonna need my boots, where I'm going. I'm gonna need my raincoat, maybe. It looks like we could get a downpour at any moment or sunny weather. It's going to be one of those two. Uh, I'm gonna bet on the, the rainy side. I'm trying to find a good way to get in there. Oh, there we go. Oh, I don't know about this. So I came here to photograph a beautiful tree I saw from the road. One of the many beautiful trees that you can see from the road. Some of them, well, most of them are not accessible or they are too far or they just don't work. But I think this one is accessible and it's going to work. I think it's beautiful. What do you think? And the backdrop is amazing. Oh, these weeds are pretty high though. Okay, I think that works pretty well. Cool. This beautiful scene right here is a good example or it's, it's a good one to explain how my uh, photography differs from traditional landscape photography, even though the, uh, those of you who have been here for a long time already know about this. But you see, in traditional landscape photography, you want to have everything here in focus, both the subject, that is the tree, and the background, the mountains. In my case, 
yes, I do want the tree in focus, of course, because it's the subject. I want it as clear as possible. And the background, it really depends. But in this case, I want it just slightly out of focus because I don't want you to see everything that there is in here. I want you to use your imagination, to engage your imagination, to uh, to create something. I'm using a 85 millimeter lens. I'm shooting it at 1.4, also at f2 and f2.8, because sometimes here in the field, it's hard to tell through these viewfinders, the screens, and especially the monitor that I'm using, how much something is out of focus, how much something is in focus. The day will come eventually when we'll be able to uh, choose the aperture afterwards, after the fact. I think uh, smartphones already do that. But anyway, uh, cameras like this one do not do that. So I am taking this thing at different apertures to make sure that I'm getting what I want. And what I want for you is to see the tree, to see that that is the subject and to give you just a little bit of context of where that tree is and what the conditions are here. But everything else is up to you. It's not about blurring the background so much that we are only left with the subject, with the tree, and we have no idea of what it is or what's behind it. No, that's not the point. We want to be subtle here. We want to be just showing the right amount of context necessary to not give all the information, to not give, to not give an answer, to not give a direct statement about this scene, but about letting the viewer, whoever is looking at this picture, make their own mind about what they are looking at and how they want to feel. Of course, this is not what we want to do all the time, but sometimes I like to do it that way. As I've said many times, by leaving those gaps in the images, we allow the viewer to fill them with their imagination. I hope all of this makes sense. I'm not saying that this is better than, you know, having everything in focus. It's up to you, it's up to the photographer to do what you want with this scene, to present it to the world the way you want. And that is the amazing thing about photography, you know, it gives us the, the freedom, the flexibility to express ourselves in very different ways, depending on how we compose the image, the settings that we use, the camera lens that we use, because otherwise we all would be creating the same stuff over and over. And that'd be very boring, right? Beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, I'm gonna set up a long exposure here. I think that the most fitting thing to do here is a panorama and that's that's what I'm gonna do. This place is called Tal Talisker Bay. Uh, there is a beautiful waterfall there, but it's got no water now, so no photo there. And there is a sea stack on the other side. I'm gonna try to capture that somehow with another long exposure. Yeah, what a beautiful place on the uh, west of sky. It's not easy to get here. The road is pretty bad and you have to walk a little bit, but uh, totally worth it.
we have an incredibly beautiful misty day today in sky there are a lot of midges though but otherwise it's it's perfect for photography you know you don't get the big vistas you don't get the views that you get on a clear day but i'm gonna show you how i make an image here in sligachan uh, of uh, the old bridge with the mountain in the background here usually you can see more mountains and it's more there's more stuff you know but today you can only see or that's my hope to show just the bridge with a long exposure and the the mountain in the background but the mountain because it's uh, misty and because it's cloudy and it's rainy it's not that clear it's just again i said this many many times but because it's true it's just a hint of what's there and i think that's what makes the what is going to make hopefully the image much better than if it was completely clear and the mountain was crisp crisp crystal clear again it's all about suggesting about being subtle and these conditions are perfect for that Sadly, I was not able to uh, take full advantage of this uh, beautiful place and this beautiful day because, as you might have seen, we do have midges today. I hope the camera was able to capture them. It was freaky. Well, the good news is that I can confirm that my new head net works, but it was freaky to see so many of them just swarming around me. The gloves work as well, but I couldn't stay there for long because they were starting to bind me uh, on my legs and my arms. I tried to put my gloves up, uh, over my uh, coat, you know, but I think they were still getting through my uh, up my pants. Uh, there are so many of them that a few will find a way. They will. Uh, in days like today, uh, being out here in such a vast and open landscape is probably not the best idea to get good shots with these conditions unless you can find a beautiful tree and you get a, a, the hint of the, 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 the landscape in the background. I think uh, I like to go to a more urban um, environment in, in days like today, you know, because it's where it's where uh, we can find shots that wouldn't work in any other uh, conditions in any other circumstances but they might work today and that was the case a few days ago when I was in the Kyle of uh, Lockhouse a beautiful uh, place it's been kind of my base camp for my operations here in the sky is where I go to get supplies is where I go to take showers is where I get my packages uh, delivered the thing is that the other day was supposed to be a sunny and clear day and it was but uh, we got some fog in the morning and that was absolutely beautiful because I was able to go on some walks around the, the Kyle and uh, cross the, uh, you know, the sky bridge as well, uh, walking on foot. And I was able to, to make a, a few images in those conditions that, again, they would have never, ever worked uh, in any other conditions. But because of that fog, because of those, uh, because of those foggy conditions, I made some of my favorite images here in sky so far and just take a look
I'm not a huge fan of uh, photographing waterfalls. I love them, but taking photos of them, not so much. But these ones are called the fairy pools. And with that backdrop, well, I had to visit them. After that beautiful tree, I can already see some of the comments. Why? Why don't you capture that scene in landscape and color? Why everything has to be square and black and white? I agree, that is a beautiful scene. And that's why I have it on tape to show it here and to remember it. I also took a few snapshots with my phone. That's not what my photography is about, you know? After all these years, after all this time, just sticking to a square for the most part. I, I also take the occasional panorama and black and white. I think uh, that's my language, the language I speak uh, in my photography now. And I think I, I, I've developed my style and my vision because I kept doing the same thing over and over no matter where I was. I was uh, going to give it a try, going to take a few shots of the waterfalls, even though I don't know if I love them, but the sun just decided to come out and ruin the whole scene. Now there is no shot whatsoever, so I'm gonna wait until a cloud comes or the sun goes behind the mountain. It is going to take a little while for the sun to cooperate, so uh, I'm moving on. I'm just checking out what's left of this place to make sure that if I'm gonna take just one or two compositions here, they are the best ones I can, I can make. Okay, I got to the, uh, I think, the end of the, the, the pools, the waterfalls. Couldn't find much. Uh, I think that the best waterfall is the one I was at earlier. And now it should work because the sun is behind that mountain. Uh, we have some light on that peak behind me. The reason why I'm not a big fan of uh, waterfalls uh, in my photography is because usually the environment they are in uh, it's very busy and very chaotic. There is always something that is just very distracting and it takes you from the main subject that is the waterfall. They work better in color, I believe, but in black and white, there is always some micro contrast here, there, everywhere. And it's just, it's something that my OCD cannot handle. Beautiful, beautiful place. I'm, I'm actually kind of happy with the images that I got. I have to work on them and see how they work out in the end because sometimes I get excited when I see them on the screen, but they don't work as well on the, uh, on the computer. But what a difference the light makes as soon as the sun went behind that mountain, as soon as the contrast went down, uh, I was able to, to, to do something uh, with this. With uh, this uh, dimmer light comes uh, better images, but uh, it also comes the midges. The midges are going crazy right now. I am gonna start going crazy as well, so I'm gonna head back to the car now.
That behind me is the Sky Bridge. Uh, I'm about to cross it and leave uh, the Isle of Skye behind. It's been an amazing, I don't know, seven, ten days. I don't know how long I've been here. I had a lot of fun photographing Sky. It's a beautiful place. But it is time to move on and to uh, go and do the same with other parts of Scotland. I'll be back though pretty soon, like in a month or so, because Rachel is coming to meet me here in Scotland and we're going to spend a couple of days in, in the sky. That'll be fun, but for now it is time to say goodbye. I hope you enjoy the video from here from Sky. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.